so the trick question here is about ground state. Um, and when we talk about the ground state, we care about the electrons. Um, we're not altering the amount of electrons in ground state. So that's kind of the trick question over there. So this is number two. Oh, I like this color here. Switch it up here. Okay. Number two, why is fluorine a gas, bromine liquid, and iodine a solid in room temperature? So this is actually a pretty complex question when we talk about this question here. Um, we're talking we're talking about um, uh, fluorine, bromine, and, and iodine here, and these guys are all halogens, right? So these guys are all halogens. So when we talk about these halogens here, we can look at our periodic table. So we have F, which is a gas. We have Br as a liquid. And then we have iodine here, which is a solid. So if we look at our periodic table here, as you can see, fluorine and bromine here is a liquid and iodine here is a solid. Right? As you can see, the, uh, the letters here, um, this here is in kind of burgundy, which represents gas. Bromine here is kind of a liquid form, which is uh, blue. And iodine here is black, so it represents the solid here. And the reason it's asking us, it's why, why, well, why are they, why are they, um, why are the gases, why are they, why are the liquids and why are they solid in room temperature? Well, if you look at these gases here or these uh, halogens here, you have, they, um, these guys here are diatomic, right? If you think about the diatomic molecules, you have Hoff, Brink, and Cl here. So these are, these are all a list of diatomic molecules. So you have F2, Br2, and I2. And then as you can see here, these guys here don't have, uh, in terms of intermolecular forces, we only care about the van der Waal forces or the London dispersion forces. So all of these guys, and let me do this in orange here. All of these guys here possess London dispersion forces. And when we're talking about London dispersion forces, um, many of these guys here depends on the atomic radius of these guys here. So as you can see, fluorine here is a gas. So, and fluorine here is, um, it has atomic mass of 18.98, bromine is 79.904, and iodine here is 126.90 here. So as you can see, as we go down here, down the periodic table, our atomic radius is going to increase which means the London dispersion forces also increase. So given those two things, um, when we talk about the states of matter here, if the London dispersion forces are increasing, um, that means they're going to be, um, these molecules are going to stick more together given the same temperature, in a constant temperature. So if I say in constant um, temperature, because the London dispersion forces are stronger as we go down the periodic table, it's the states of matter are going to be, um, the molecules are being more tightly bound together. So therefore, um, it's in a solid form. So as you can see, this guy here is solid form. And we have the, this iodine here has the highest amount of uh, London dispersion forces. So the molecules are going to be closely packed together. So therefore, it's going to be solid form. And then it's going to be liquid for bromine because it's this again um the atomic mass here is slightly smaller and fluorine here has the smallest atomic mass here so it's going to exist as gas because it has less london dispersion force holding it together so in terms of a gas it's more free to um more free uh and it takes in more volume in that case so in this again this is all in room temperatures because we're comparing this in constant temperature so that's why fluorine's gas bromine's a liquid and iodine's a solid here in um in, in room temperature so let's see here, all of them are halogens, which is great. And we only care about the van der Waal forces, which is good. So higher the van der Waal forces, the higher the energy uh, required to break these bonds. So therefore, it's in a solid form. And then bromine's a liquid and a fluorine's a solid here. So this solution here is correct. It kind of goes back to this idea of intermolecular forces and how the, um, and how the bonds work and how much energy you need to break those bonds here. So the solution here is correct. Thank <laughs> you.